Welcome back to Start Your Day. For Women's History Month, our next guest is still making history at the young age of 76 as a national hero in the Bahamas. The Right Honorable Cynthia Pratt, affectionately known as Mother Pratt, is the former Deputy Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. That is equivalent to our Vice President Kamala Harris. She's also held many firsts, the first woman to have served as acting prime minister, the first woman minister of national security. Uh, she's done it all. She's been there at key, even pivotal moments. After 17 years of absence in the political arena, she has returned as the Commonwealth's newly appointed deputy governor general, appointed Queen of England uh, did. Um, we're honored to have you on Start Your Day, Mother Pratt. Um, we just love you. You radiate an orange, by the way. I told you as we were doing our mic checks uh, in the break um, that that's your color. Uh, and so thank you. We appreciate you joining us. And I want to start here. The Governor General is really the liaison with the Prime Minister, but also for the entire country with the Queen. What is it like to represent the Bahamas in such an honorable capacity? Well, let me begin by saying it, it is always a pleasure to hear from you, Sharon. I thank you so much for taking yeah. time to interview me. But, you know, having that position, um, it, is, it is quite a, a, a privilege, particularly for women. And um, it is unique, but it is also very testing and trying. You have a lot of temptations to do things or say things because you're scrutinized a lot because you're a female. And most of the time, they're mm. always critics that you, you're not able to perform in that capacity. And, and so you prove them all wrong. You prove them all wrong. Mm. But I've always been a fighter. I've always been an overcomer. And um, I'm stronger mm. when you say that I can't do it. You, you, you make that statement, she can't do it. I prove to you that I can. Mm -hmm. And so sitting in that position, I was able really to help more of my people internationally and locally. I want to know this because I could list your accomplishments, the things that you've done in your extraordinary life and are still doing. You're a trained nurse a former educator, though you're still teaching us, a world-class athlete, ordained minister, and also you care so many others you care for, a philanthropist. We know you also received the Nelson Mandela Humanitarian Award. Just, as I said, remarkable accomplishment after accomplishment. But I want to know what the biggest hurdle is that you've had to overcome But one of the biggest hurdles in my life has always been um, the fact that when in my country, I must say it might not be internationally, but in my country, when you live in the inner city, there's always mm. some critics, there's always some negative response about where you live. It has nothing to do with your mm. performance. And so I think that the biggest hurdle that I had to cross was to prove to people that it's not where you live, it's what's within you. You can overcome and you can achieve no matter what, because if it's on the inside, Sharon, it will come on the outside. And so I think mm -hmm. that I had a message, I always been preaching this to, to our young people in particular who comes from the inner city, and that's where the majority of us come from, that you don't have to prove them wrong. You must prove them wrong. In doing wow. so, you will show them that you're able to achieve as much as they have achieved, even though they live in a gated community. And I think that's one of the major mm -hmm. hurdles that I had to overcome. Wow. Even sitting in the parliament, sometimes statements are made, and, and I think they would have forgotten that I'm sitting there when they would say things oh. that is not becoming and encouraging people from the inner city. Mm. You know, you, your journey, as we said, it's just incredible. 
coming from extreme poverty, rising to deputy governor general of the Bahamas. You write about so much of your story um, in your new autobiography, From the Pit to the Palace. And I love it. It's, this is a real story. Um, so what's the overall message that you hope will resonate with others, so many readers out there? Sharon, I'm hoping that I can inspire the world, not, not so much the, Baham, the Bahamian people, but the world. There are masses, millions who are still in the pit and hoping, hoping wow. what is happening to their world because they are told that they can never make it based on where they're coming from. And so I want them to know there is a woman who believes that I can achieve whatever I want to achieve. I might fall down, but I'll get up. I might be lost today, but I'll continue to wander through the woods until I find my way out. These are the, these are the things that we must believe in ourselves. We must be overcomers. And I am one who believe in overcoming mm -hmm. all of the challenges, not because I want to prove it to the males, but I want to prove it to the nation because women as yes. a whole sometimes are scrutinized by not being able to do this or not being able to do that. As a minister of national security, I was the first mm -hmm. woman to sit in that position. Of course, you know what I had to go through. I was too soft. Mm -hmm. I was too emotional, all these <laughs> things until I started to perform and they saw I wasn't too soft there making decisions <laughs> because here is the police leading, here is the defense force I'm leading, and here is the prison I'm leading. So, so I'm saying to you wow. that I can perform. Being female has nothing to do with it. But when I stood firm, you know. they knew I was serious about <laughs> what I was saying. Yeah, you know, it sounds like you're saying, Mother Pratt, that I, I can show you better than I can tell you. And, and you outperformed um, at every step along the way. We only have about, uh, you know, 20 seconds or so left. But for people, you know, I go to the Bahamas. We enjoy uh, the rich tourism, the travel. But people don't know about the history. And I hope I can come visit you. I just adore you. I really adore you. And you inspire me. But what do people need to know beyond the beauty and the beaches? Well, we would like to showcase our people. That's most important. The days of sun, sand, and sea is gone. There are many countries that have sun, sand, and sea. But it's, it is the way we treat the tourists when they arrive in this country, the love that we portray to them, what it means to be Bahamian, and how much we appreciate them. And we always say it's better in the Bahamas. And so we would want them to return because number our number one in to, tourism is our number one industry. And so we must bear in mind that when the tourist comes here, we want them to see and to feel that they are loved and they would want to return. Absolutely. From from slavery to independence, was looking at some pictures of the museum. They're just remarkable people. Um, in the Bahamas, yeah. and I am going to come see you, Mother Pratt. Hopefully, you'll open the door for me. Uh, that book, From Pit to Palace, is available now for pre-order yeah. on Amazon. Everyone should buy it. Everyone should read that book. The proceeds will go to the Mother Pratt Foundation. Um, and I know you plan to build a shelter for abused women and support people in need. You are truly, truly a remarkable woman, and I think a hero in the Bahamas. So such an honor to talk to you today. Thank you, Mother Pratt for joining us right here on Start Your Day in BNC.